Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> right. Perfect. Hello, um, my name is Tomo, and I'm 23 years old. And since the age of nine, I have been away from home in Japan. And as of last year, I had my 4,821st night overseas, which meant that I had spent more time abroad than the time I had spent in Japan. So today, I want to talk to you about how I, um, how my experience as a traveler, and how I have came to find the perfect home in my life abroad. Now, throughout my time abroad, people have been telling me what defines home. Home is where your parents live. Home is where you grew up. You have home country. And even the Oxford definition goes along the line of a place where one permanently lives, especially as a member of family or household. So for me, this, these concepts and definitions are really troubling because, well, I spend most of the time living abroad. And secondly, well, you know, I had nothing, that, I had nothing near me that really resembled home, like our parents and our childhood settings. So when I was nine, I chose to leave Japan and study in New Zealand. And the challenge was really overwhelming. <laughs> um, I was surrounded by a lot of, lot of white kids with blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> and I had to get cope with this Vegemite, the smell of it, the horrific smell of it, and also the sheep outside, you know, all of which my body has really rejected to the point of uncontrolled convulsion. <laughs> but you know, Ultimately, though, you kind of take up this challenge to create a new home in New Zealand. And by learning the language, by learning, new learning to make new friends, <coughs> learning to play cricket, and learning to love these things, <laughs> uh, life became much easier. And it became easy to the point that you know, I was able to get by with a, with a couple of phone calls from my parents per month and maybe a care package every now and then. But, um, so this is, this is how I get along, basically. <laughs> um, but um, my life um, accelerated, my, tra my life of travel accelerated after I left New Zealand when I was 18. And for the last six years, I've been living, I've lived in six different countries, or six different cities, sorry, um, like Bonn, Vienna, Washington, uh, St. Andrews is one of them, but I'm not quite sure which one the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Wandering through basically 52 different countries, spending all these nights in different beds, in different hostels, hotels, and strange houses. And all this shared volume of traveling has called into question again what the, the home that I really had in New Zealand and in Japan. But you know, I think this is something that is only not felt by only, this is something that is not only felt by me, but this is a realistic experience in our globalized world. And as the world gets smaller, our possibilities and opportunities in our lives became bigger. And you know, our lives are nowadays are no longer tied to one place, and we are often free to go almost anywhere. I mean, look at yourself and look at the people around you. I mean, we came to one of the four corners of the earth just to earn a degree. I mean, this is amazing. But in the midst of all this, however, um, I came to face a very difficult problem, a very difficult paradox. So the paradox is, how, how do we define home? Or how do we make sense of our belonging and our home when, when our lives are going everywhere. And so my life has so far been full of student visas and work visas and nothing permanent. And people do say things like, you know, you often find out so much about your home country by being outside of it and looking, in, looking into it. But for me, it was a very different experience because I actually started to lose what it means to be and think Japanese. But however, there, is, there must be some kind of wisdom after, you know, traveling through 52 different countries and 500 cities, right? So after all these traveling, um, I have realized that there were certain points, certain moments in my travel that revealed that potential for more nomadic, home, more nomadic concepts about home and really changed the sense of our home and belonging. So, my own experience with nomadic people came when I was in Botswana and actually just going through the Kalahari Desert where the Sam people lives. And I basically had this six liter backpack on me, which was kind of similar to what the Sam people have, which is to, to travel and to chase the animals of Kalahari Desert and take everything with them. And I felt like they too didn't have, just like me, a home as such. 
Um, but so in one of the bizarre parts of the world, we had a lot in common. <laughs> um, but you know, these people doesn't travel 24-7. They, you know, they stop at the end of the day, spread out their belongings, unpack and cook and eat with their kins and get really, really comfortable. And actually, I was on, um, I was on a bus through Kalahari Desert. Um, I was just sitting at the back <laughs> and <laughs> overloaded. And um, I had to ask one of these locals, because he was really bothering me, I had to ask them, where are home for these people? And you know, two, two or three minutes later, we came across a, um, a bridge, which was, and then from the bridge you can see far through the Kalahari Desert, and you see a group of people standing, just like so. And then they pointed at them and says, here it is, that's their home. Um, so when I was in Okavango Delta and looking at this tree, <laughs> um, I tried to gather up all the bits and pieces from my traveling to really come out with, come out with my own definition of home and really challenge uh, the home that, the con our old concept of home that has troubled us, troubled me in my increasingly mobile life. So one thing I came to understand is that everything that we do in our lives is somehow directed towards creating home. And I often used to say things like, I miss home, or I can't wait till I get home. But all these longing for, uh, all these longing for the past and waiting for the future is one way in which I became very, very passive and neglectful of the life, of the essence of life that unfolded in front of me at every moment, at every day. So for some people, their project of making home is, begins anew every day. And as our lives became more like their experiences, the same conception of home, which is this creation of home every day, is becoming increasingly relevant to us all. So, but you know, I, I chose this life, basically. I chose this life, and I, and, um, I love traveling, and, <coughs> and I was always inspired by all these dotted lines on the map, which shows which shows where all the explorers like Captain Cook and Thomas Magellan went through. And they're always constantly asking, they're always constantly asking um, forwards questions, what is out there. So for them, traveling itself, um, traveling itself is not about to get to a destination, but actually the travel, the journey, the meat and juice of these, these experience of traveling itself. And I became really, really, really inspired by this idea. So, for me, the travel, the journey, became a central focus of my life. And, <coughs> and what I really love about this, this idea is that I started to go, I started to never go straight home, actually. And even nowadays, I travel to, I travel um, never straight anywhere. So, um, so, you know, this is life of traveling, I found this life of traveling from A to B too simplistic, um, you know, because everybody gets to be eventually. So I, I really learned to love what is in between and what is in between A and B, and really love to make a lot of corners in your life, whether you're walking on the street or, or, um, or on a plane or going anywhere, because I'm always surprised. I'm always looking forward to these corners and what can be around it. So, well, I'm not an anthropologist, but from my own experience with sand people and travel, I start to understand that home is a journey itself. Home is in journey itself. And journey is part of a life in which we encounter strangers, new strangers, between A and B, who could ultimately be our friends of tomorrow. And those are the people who are going to reinforce our sense of belonging in an increasingly globalized world. So home is always about keeping this connection with everybody around you as we travel through time and space. So this idea of keeping in touch, the something that we often say a lot, cannot be just a mere utterance, but it has to be word of action. And I have been reconstructing this idea of home and this close, like, intimate connection by actually sending postcards out to all my friends and see what happens. And then what happened was basically I, I get all these postcards back. And by having a room full of postcards, is just one way for me to make me feel that I actually belong to this world. And to have that idea in your head is one way in which I travel and still feel at home. 
So to write and to know what to write and to know what friend that the friends around the world is there for you, I feel belong at home wherever wherever I go. So when home travels with us in our journey, we really start to see the world in a very different way, and I really enjoy that. And this is a world where strangers are no longer strange to us, but they are actually part of our home. So my my really the, my punching point for this 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 talk is that wherever you go in the world, no matter how far the life takes you, um, please try to make yourself at home. Thank you. <laughs>